Welcome back guys to another video on deadlock. So in previous lecture we already completed the Pankhurst algorithm and safety algorithm. So today we take an example of a Pankhurst algorithm and I will teach you how to solve the Pankhurst algorithm example. Please guys if you haven't seen my previous video do watch it first because to solve this Pankhurst algorithm first of all you must need to have the basic understanding of how Pankhurst and safety algorithm works. Okay. So Let's see how to solve this Pankhurst algorithm example. So in this example, there are five processes P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4 and three resources A, B and C having number of instances 10, 5 and 7 respectively. Here the maximum requirement of every process is P1. It means to complete P0 task, we need to allocate seven instance of A 5 instance of B and 3 instance of C to P0. Same thing is here, P1 needs 3 instance of A, 2 instance of B and 2 instance of C to complete P1 task. Same thing is here, P2 needs 9 instance of A, 0 instance of B and 2 instance of C to complete P2. So this is the maximum requirement of every process. Now from that maximum requirement, some of the instance is already allocated. See here, P0 needs 5 instance of B. But from that 5 instance, 1 is already allocated. So how many other instance of B we need to allocate so that it can complete this task? 4 instance. So what we are doing here is simply we are subtracting the value of allocated from maximum. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So same thing is here. P0 needs 7 instance of A and 0 is allocated. So we need to allocate all 7 instance. Same thing is here. 3 instance of C is required from that 0 is allocated. So we need to allocate 3 instance of C. Same thing is here. 3 is the maximum requirement of P1. From that 2 is already allocated. So we need to allocate one more instance of A. 2 minus 0, it means 2 instance of B and 2 instance of C to complete this task. Same thing is here, 9 minus 3 which is 6, 0 minus 0 is equal to 0 and 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Here, 2 minus 2 which is 0, 2 minus 1 which is 1 and 1. Same thing is here, 4 minus 0 which is 4, 3 minus 0 which is 3 and 3 minus 2 which is 1. So this is the need table. Now let's find out that which process is already successfully completed. Tell me, how can we say that a process is successfully completed or not? So we can say that if the requirement of any process is zero resources, then that process is successfully completed, right? Check out here. So here the requirement of process P2 of instance of resource B and C is 0, 0. But still to complete this task it needs 6 instance of resource A. So this process is not successfully completed, right? Same thing is here calculate for here. There is no process which is requirement is 0, 0, 0, right? So all processes are still not completed. So the value of finish boolean variable of all the process is false because it indicates that these all process are not successfully completed. If the requirement of any process is 0, 0, 0, then we change the value of this finished boolean variable to true. Okay. So now our job is to provide the required resources to the particular process. But for that, this data must be given to us, the available resources, but that is not given. So first of all, we need to find out the number of available resources. Okay. Let's see. Here the total resources is given, the total instance of 10 of resource A, 
five instance of B and seven instance of C. From that, some instance is already allocated. So if we add the all allocated instance of a particular resource and subtract it from the total instance then we can find out the available resources right see here we have 10 instance of resource a from that 3 plus 2 plus 2 7 instance of a are already allocated to p1 p2 and p3 so how many resources are available remaining are three right because 10 is the total and from that seven is allocated so now we have available three instance of a right same thing is here total instance of b is five from that two is already allocated so we have available three instance of b same thing is here the total instance is seven from that 5 is already allocated so we have available two instance of c so this is how we can find out the available resource so now we have available all the required data so now we apply banker's algorithm and tell me what is the first step in banker's algorithm in first two step we check for the validity so here let's see the requirement of all the process is less than the maximum requirement right so yes here we can say that all processes are valid so now we doesn't need to check for the validity now we need to find out such process i so that we can complete its required resources we can allocate the required resource to it okay so let's find out that process here p0 needs seven instance of a but we have available only three instance so we cannot provide seven instance to p0 so p0 cannot complete so let's check for the next process the next is p1 it requires one instance of a and we have available three instance of a so yes we can provide one instance it needs two instance of b and we have available three so yes we can provide two instance of b also check for c it need two instance and we have available two so yes we can provide a two instance of c so here we can provide the required resources to process p1 okay so now we apply the third step of banker's algorithm and we allocate the required resources to it so uh, here is the available resources before allocation now assume that we allocate it to the uh, required resources so after allocation we need to find out the available resources right so before allocation value is instance is 3 and then we allocate one instance of a so after allocation we have available only two instance of a same thing is here 3 minus 2 so we have available only one instance of b and two instance of uh, c is required from that two is allocated so after allocation we have available zero instance of c so this is the available resources after allocation now after allocation the value of need is zero 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 because we allocate the required resources and here the need is zero 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 it means we can say that this process is successfully completed so we change the value of finish variable true now this process is successfully completed so after completion of a process what it will do it will release all the resources so the number of resources are 3 to 2 and it will release these resources so we add this release uh, these uh, resources to the available resources so 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and uh, 2 plus 0 is equal to 2 so after the completion of uh, process p1 we have available 5 3 and 2 instance of a b and c respectively and here process p1 is successfully completed so we add it to the save sequence so here we are following two different steps in first step 
we allocate required resource to the particular process and then in second step that process will release all the resource because its work is successfully completed so for that calculation of a first step we allocate the resource to the particular process so we do available minus need right we are changing the value of available resources by available is equals to available minus need now in second step what we do that process will release all the resource so at that time we change the value of again available resources by adding the maximum value right so these two steps we follow here but if you observe these two steps here maximum is nothing but the allocated plus need right so instead of this we can write sorry here instead of this we can write allocated plus need so now observe these steps the step is available minus need and we get available value then on that available value we add allocated plus need so here in first step we subtract the need value then in second step we again add that same need value so if we follow the maths rule here we can remove plus and minus need so now what we need to do we need to take this available value now this available is the value before allocation and this available is value after allocation right this value is before allocation this value is after allocation so we take the value before allocation and we directly add allocated value to it then we get the same result check out here the available resources before allocation is 332 now we assume that uh, this uh, resources is allocated so instead of uh, uh, but uh, removing or subtracting the need value from this available resource we directly add this uh, allocated value so allocated is 2 so 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 so here value is changes to 5 and then 0 plus 3 which is 3 0 plus 2 which is 2 so 5 3 2 we get the same result 5 3 2 so here there is a one trick and the trick is that if we find that for such a one process in which we allocate the resource then we directly add the allocated value to it and change the value of need resources to 0 0 0 and change the finish variables value to true. So first three steps of Banker's algorithm is successfully implemented. So now we apply fourth and the last step of Banker's algorithm which is safety algorithm in which what we do? We try to allocate the resource to the remaining process and find out the safe sequence. So let's find out the safe sequence. So now let's check for P2. That the requirement of P2 is 6 instance of A. We have available only 5 instance of A. So we can't provide 6 instance. So we can't complete the request of P2. Now let's check for P3 and its requirement is 0 instance of A, 1 instance of B. We have available 3 instance of B. So yes, we can provide uh, 1 instance of B. The requirement of C, 1 instance of C for P3 and we have available 2 instance of C. So yes, here also we can provide uh, 1 instance of C. So yes, we can complete the request of P3. So now we allocate the resource. So now after the allocation, its need is 0, 0, 0 and the process is successfully complemented. So complete, uh, completed. So we change its uh, finished variable value to 2 now the process is successfully completed so it will release all the allocated resource the allocated resource are 2 plus 1 2 1 1 so we add that value so 5 plus 2 the answer is 7 then 1 1 so here we add 3 plus 1 answer is 4 and here 2 plus 1 answer is 3 so process p3 is successfully completed so we add P3 in our safe sequence. Now let's check for P4. Its requirement is 4, 3, 1. We have available 7, 4, and 3. So, yes, we can provide a resource to 
P4. So we allocate resource. So after allocation, its need is changes from 0, 0, 0, and the, we change the value of finished variable to true. The process is successfully completed. So it will release all the resources. Release uh, resources are 0, 0, 2. So value is changes from 7, 4, 3 to 7, 4, 5. So now this process is also successfully completed. So we add it to the save sequence. Okay. So now let's check for the next process is P0. Its need is 743. We have available 745. So yes, we can allocate the required resources. Uh, so after the allocation of uh, instance, the need of uh, P0 is 000. The process is successfully completed. So after the successfully execution of p0 this uh, process will release all the allocated resources so it will release this one instance so now we have available five instance of b the process is successfully completed so we add it to the save sequence so we add p0 in our save sequence now let's check for the last process which is p0 its need is say six instance we have available seven instance so yes, we can provide a, a, a resource. So the after the allocation of six instance, its need is now zero. So this process is also successfully completed. So now we change its finish variable to true. This process is successfully completed. So it will release all the resource. So we directly add this allocated resource to our available resources. So now the value is seven plus three, ten. 0 plus 5, 5 and 2 plus 5 which is 7. Process P2 is also successfully completed. So we add it to the safe sequence. So this is how you can find the safe sequence using bankers and safety algorithm. So this is how you can solve any bankers algorithm problem. So after the solving this problem, how can you check that whether your answer is correct or not. So for that you need to check two conditions. The first thing is the finished variable value of all the process is must be true. And the second thing is at, at the end, whatever the value you get, the available resource is must be equal to the total resource. If these both are equal, it means you can say that your answer is correct, right? So here safe sequence is possible. It means granting the request of uh, process P1 will never leads to the deadlock. But suppose at the end you uh, find that uh, uh, the finish variable of uh, any process is false, then safe sequence is not exist. It means granting the permission of P1 will may leads to the deadlock. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. If you have any queries, here is my contact detail. You can mail me. I will solve your doubts. Here is my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp me and uh, I will try to solve your queries. So please guys, if you like my videos, hit that like button and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.